Good morning, everyone. I'm trying to straighten my head out, so forgive me. <laughs> it's kind of hard because it's kind of rough up there. Uh, I want to welcome everyone here this morning. Glad we got the sun shining out there again. And let's bring the sunshine in here. So let's sing, Jesus loves me. This I know. And we all know that. Wow. you love that song. I often think of that song as something that children sing. It's so, so true for all of us. Amen. That, that Jesus loves us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, today we have come together giving thanks to you for your wisdom and your wonder. Surely no human mind could ever conceive all that makes up this world and beyond. And Lord, we confess our shortcomings and know of our imperfections, but your grace and mercy overshadow our sin. And because of Jesus Christ and his message of love and salvation, freely given to all who believe, this is not our final home. So Lord, knowing you as the one true God, we come humbly into your presence honoring you with our dedicated worship, song, and prayer. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And still still greeting with the bumps and waves and all. Oh, so. Good morning.
Good morning, everybody. Our scripture this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 16 through 19. Pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in his inner being. Also, also that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This ends in morning scripture. May the Lord bless this reading to your hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. I appreciate that. And uh, we, we are successful at broadcasting today. It's going out on, on my phone. So uh, anyway, that might be bad because I wasn't real happy with AT&T and I let them know last week. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Anyway, glad you're here. Uh, welcome to the Lord's house today. I uh, wanted to uh, remind you to be in prayer, of course, for all our prayer needs. Uh, Cheryl Pennington, who attends here, uh, slipped and fell in her home and, and uh, uh, injured her ribs uh, kind of front and back really bad. So uh, please pray for her. She's home recovering from that at this time and, and uh, still needs, I think, another x-ray to, to make sure that nothing was broke. Um, and then also, uh, if you would remember Ron Chef in your prayers, Ron's almost at the place where he's ready to, to do handstands, I think. Not quite, but almost. Anyway, so glad he's doing so much better, and we're thankful for that. Uh, and uh, good to see Mary, Mary Alice here today. Uh, continue to pray for uh, David Mogans, uh, and uh, appreciate your prayers for my daughter Angie, also Beth Miller, uh, Steve Allspaw, Paul Snyder. Hazel Blankenship, and glad Hazel is here today. Uh, Tata Postel, uh, Sean Dunn, Kathy Masters, Mike Jenkins, Madison Marvich, uh, Don Griffin, and Don is here today. We're glad that he's feeling okay. Uh, Roger Dennis, Harvey Irvine, uh, Scott Mills, uh, David Lip. <laughs> uh, I can't miss him. He's got a bright red shirt on. So anyway, uh, good to see you, Brother David. Uh, Julie Hoffman, David Grace, James Hartle, a uh, very special prayer need there. Also, Becky Varner, uh, Tiffany Richardson, Jill Lippert, uh, Roger Hudnell. Uh, remember, Roger, in your prayer, prayers, please. Also, Marcia Edwards, Peg Blair, Linda Eddington, uh, Ron and Patty Sanderson. It's good to see Brother Ron here today. Also, uh, Robin Marvich, Herman, I say, I think I got him twice, uh, Brother Daniels, uh, Michelle Rich, Steve Ward, uh, is Steve is still in need of prayer, and then Richard Kuhlman, that's Debbie's aunt, uh, uncle, who uh, was injured in a, very severely in a, in a car accident, still recovering, and Laura Postel, and it's good to see Laura in church today. Anyone else? Okay. 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 So, so we're uh, thankful to praise uh, for Hazel, and then also remember Doug Chevalier, as he mentioned. Uh, he is uh, he is here, and thankful that he's uh, doing much better than uh, earlier in the week. So, uh, just uh, that the Lord continue to continues to bless him. Any other prayer needs, Debbie? Okay, Darcy Walker, remember her in your prayers, please. That's our grandson's babysitter, so she's uh, yeah, got some recovery ahead of her yet. Anyone else? Okay, we are going to sing our prayer chorus. 
And uh, for God so loved the world, we'll sing it through twice, second time through. If you have an unspoken request, please raise your hand. We'll, we'll go to the Lord with those, as al along with those who are listening to us today. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son to die on Calvary's tree, from sin to set me free, someday. Sing it again, unspoken. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great love that you give to us. We're thankful that it reaches out through all this world. And Lord, today as we're here in the Fair Park, we're just thankful for each one gathered here with us today. Might you bless each one accordingly, Lord. And we pray for those listening on our uh, broadcast that, Lord, you would bless those. We're thankful uh, that, that you've allowed us to reach beyond the confines and walls of, of this building so, Lord, we pray that our duties will go on, our service to you will go on, and that you'll bless and guide us and lead us in the ways you would have us to serve you. Lord, we pray today for the many special needs that we have asked of. Uh, those who have had surgeries recently, those who have been in hospitals, and those who are in nursing homes, might you watch over them, we pray. So, Lord, today we know many hands uplifted. And we realize each one of those have a special need, special significance. And so today, Lord, we pray thy will be done. And Lord, we ask as we are here today to talk about your great love for each of us. We pray that our hearts are opened, that we are warmed by the word of God, and that we go away encouraged in the things of God, and that we just say today, I love Jesus. So we pray these things in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. We want to remind you of just a few things. Uh, today, uh, first of all, the bulletins have been donated by Sharon Sawyer and Maxine Kors and Ray Mabry uh, in honor of their mother, a Ava Mabry. Uh, her birthday was June the 24th, 1915. So anyway, we're glad that she's uh, that being honored today. So uh, a good faithful member here for a lot of years. Uh, we, we want to remind you, uh, men, first of all, uh, that are in our men's group, uh, uh, need to have just a quick meeting in the back over here. Uh, Doug? Yeah. That'll be fine. Okay, over by our new Dirty Hall. I got to say it. So anyway, uh, that we uh, uh, un uh, announced here a week ago. Um, anyway, that we'll have uh, just a quick uh, men's meeting. So if you're available, please go to that. Uh, it won't take but a few minutes. Uh, remind you of upcoming events, the 4th of July, just around the corner, uh, church council on the 12th. And then please remember our chicken uh, barbecue uh, that our choir sponsors. Uh, we are going for full blast with that. So uh, tickets are $9 each. I just happen to have a bunch in my pocket if anybody needs any. Uh, the menu, half chicken, baked beans, coleslaw, roll and butter, dessert and drink. Uh, and there will be our pie option that uh, we we love so much. And so uh, there also will be drive-through service. Uh, so uh, so your help is appreciated. On the back page, it talks about we can't do this without your help. So uh, uh, we encourage you to be a part of this, and uh, and that makes it a success. Uh, uh, soda, I'll say soda. Don't put down pop donations. So. 
If you're from the South, you'll want to say soda. But anyway, uh, Pepsi, Diet Coke, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, or Mountain Dew, we're going to try to limit it just to those uh, drinks uh, and, and water as well, I think. So uh, anyway, uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll see a good number out and just have a good time. Uh, our dinner that we had uh, here I thought was a great success out in the shelter house. Everything went well with the, with the doors open, winds blowing through. It's, it's, it's going to be good and safe. So we hope you can come and be with us for a very, very special time. Let me remind you, of course, again, of, of giving. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. We have a letter from uh, the missionary Sarah and Peter uh, McCurdy uh, that we support here and encourage you, if you haven't thought about it, uh, can, you can write in on your bulletin a little uh, something extra um, or part of it designated to go to them. Uh, in January, they say they transitioned to Mexico City where they begin their new missionary term of service. And they go on and talk about it being an adventure and, and exciting and, and scary in some ways. We'll have the letter posted uh, outside. This year, they said that those who give through churches and other means, generous donors have come together to provide for matching funds. So whatever amount we give, there's another amount that is given to them. And uh, we're thankful that uh, that can encourage them and give to them a little bit more. So uh, consider the McCurdy's as a good missionary effort and uh, opportunity. They're from Ohio, so uh, they're bred and born, they're Buckeye, so you know, can't, go, can't go wrong with that. So anyway, okay, tithes and offerings, a plate is over by the door. Thank you again for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are going to sing our song again. What a friend we have in Jesus. If you're looking in your book, I think it's 197. 197. Okay. Can you tell them? Please stand.
This morning we're thankful that Pam Gruber is coming and singing for us. Uh, you are still Lord, I believe is the name of the song. Good morning.
Thank you, Pam. Appreciate that. Uh, beautiful song. I uh, like that a lot. You're still Lord to me. Well, I'm uh, going to talk to you for a little bit about Jesus' love for you and me. Uh, I had to go into the doctor's office this week and they uh, said, get your re uh, prescriptions refilled. You need to see a doctor and get some blood tests. So they called me. What this nurse told me, she said, You're too sweet. <laughs> so she gave me some meds, they gave me some meds for that. So, uh, anyway, just wanted you to know if anything, I'm too sweet. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. A beautiful passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is sharing with the Ephesian church about some things in our lives and the connection we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you noticed a theme today from the hymns that we sang. I think there's something both teachable as well as comforting in those words. We can understand that He loves us. It says that in verse 17, Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. And then it goes to the depths of what God's love is. What is the breadth? What is the length? What is the depth? What is the height? And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. I think sometimes we need a little reassurance. We need to remember that God loves me. That each of us know and understand that that love is, is so special, so unique, that it touches us here where no one else can. And I, I say to you today, that love was extended to this world as a Christmas card when Jesus Christ was born. It was emphasized when Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. And by the way, it enables our salvation. That is the only way we can be saved is through trusting in Jesus Christ and His shed blood at the cross. That promises us a home in heaven. And that love that the Lord holds in our lives should be dear to our hearts. It ought to be just what we need. When you feel down, when you feel discouraged, when you feel beaten up, I want you to remember Jesus loves you. And that should encourage you. That love that the Lord has for you should be dear in your heart as we know He loves us. You see, the expression of His love is, is honestly seen everywhere. We look at the sun as it shines and we know it's because of God who loves us. By the way, it was nice to see our parking lot all paved and new striping down. And, and uh, well, not paved, it was, it was sealed. Uh, paved would cost us a whole lot more money. But anyway, it was sealed. And it looks good. You know, there's something about the expression of His love. I think it's seen in so many ways. As we look at the sun, as we look at the flowers blooming and the trees that offer their shade, we get a little hint of how much God loves us. We look at a family unit and we see the connection that is there. And it's because of love. And we know and understand something of the love of God. Someone wrote that simple pleasure of looking at the one you love is what we enjoy most when we worship God and we bask in His presence. When we come together to hear the Word of God, when those who are listening to us on our broadcast, we understand that we've come to learn something, to get a little closer in our relationship to the Lord. And I'm thankful that even though it is so simple, it is so important to us. I want to share four thoughts with you very quickly today. And I pray there will be a blessing and a help to you in understanding not only God's love for you, but what this love entails. There's a prayer that was prayed in verse 16 by the Apostle Paul. And he prays to God to bestow His riches of grace. God's grace. Grace is a beautiful word. It is a word that 
touches us and, and moves us and manipulates our thoughts to think that God is in control and that he's guiding us as he governs this world. And one day we will be in his presence again. He prays for some things of these riches of grace. One of them is your inner strength. How strong are you spiritually today? You see, your physical body needs strengthened every day. You get up out of bed, and, and whether you know that or not, that, that's an exercise <laughs> when you set up from bed. Uh, you, you started your morning. You started your day. Well, it goes the same for the spiritual. There's some things that we ought to understand. We need grace each day to face trials, to face burdens that will come our way. And we need to be strengthened in our faith. And I, I see several thoughts here that I want you to, to look at quickly. It talks about, in verse 16, of His glory. Uh, in verse 16 it says that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory. In Philippians chapter 4, in verse 19, there the Word of God says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's something that God does every day as we live, as we have to face another day. Sometimes we say, I don't think I'll make it, but I want you to remember He's strengthening you for that very thing. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's something God wants you to know and to understand, that He strengthens your life so that you can go on in Him. In Colossians 1 verse 11, it says, Strengthen with all might according to His glorious power for the patience and long-suffering with joy. Remember, as children, uh, we used to eat cereal that would uh, just made you think you were strong. Wheaties. Remember Wheaties? And on the front of it, there was that picture of that uh, well, I won't tell you whose picture was on there, but anyway. Uh, but there were some pictures of, of, of people who had become successful uh, in, uh, in sports and different things. Well, I want you to know in our life, in the Word of God, it ought to appear as we read the Word of God and turn a page that it's Jesus Christ who strengthens our life, who encourages us, who enables us to go on for His honor and for His glory. If you have your Bibles open, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, three things here that I really think are, are, are worth paying attention to. By the way, riches of grace is a theme of the book of Ephesians. In verse 7 it says, "...in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of His grace." That's just the way God is. He bestows upon us or gives to us the very things that we need. In Ephesians 2 verse 7, it says that in the ages to come, that's in the future, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. And when you think about that, that uh, tells me that this is an ending. It isn't a, a book that closes and is over with and you say the end and it's done. God's love and riches continue on right on through eternity. I'm glad today to know that His riches and grace is extended to us because He loves you and me. Then I see something down in verse 17 I want you to take note of. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That's talking about the indwelling of the Spirit. The indwelling of the Spirit. And to understand that we are rooted and grounded in love. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 22 it says, "...in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit." Just as this building was put together, God is putting us together. He's using this time to grow us into His knowledge and, His, and getting a little closer to Him. And so we're glad today that we understand the Holy Spirit indwells us, lives within us. 
And as God dwells in us, we understand that we are living as temples for Him. Listen to what it says in uh, uh, John chapter 14 and verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, and that's a qualifier, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we come to him and make our home with him. That's what God does for you and for me. And we understand that that is a truth that we can take to the bank today, so to speak. And to understand, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? We belong to God. And our lives should count for Him. And that exemplifies the love of God to others. You see... As we understand our spiritual source of life, that it comes from above, it demands that our taproot is, is deep in Him, that we ground ourselves in the love of God. I um, saw a, a tree, in fact, Debbie pointed it out to me as we were uh, driving into our neighborhood. She said, look over there, this large tree had fallen uh, through the storm that we had a few days ago. And the roots had actually pulled out of the ground and the whole tree, and it was a huge tree, was laying and fortunately fell perfectly between two houses. But, but nonetheless, uh, you could tell the roots just let go. They weren't deep. And that's what happens to us spiritually if we're not careful. If we're not putting our tap root down into the things of God, into the Word. I think we all saw the... Uh, collapse of the apartment building in Florida last week and, and the horrendous loss of life, still a lot of people that are missing. And to understand that architects had come, there were building inspectors and they said, well, this building has been sinking two centimeters a year. And I think that was back from the 1990s. Well, anyway, finally the imminent collapse and death of some of those ten tenants. To, to understand we need to be successful as children of God, but we can be weakened by things of this world. And the only way we stay secure when the winds of adversity blow is if our taproot is down, settled in the Lord. We have to have a firm, and tr a firm trust and allegiance to Jesus Christ. Hebrews 3 verse 6 says this, But Christ as a son over His own house, Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? God wants us to be faithful. And that love that He bestows upon us comes from His Father who's given to Him and then is shared with us. And oh, today, we need to make sure our allegiance is to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then let me just say... Thirdly, that we can grow in our knowledge of God's love. See, I think when we first get saved, there's a very basic understanding about God's love. Yes, God loves me. But it, do we understand the depth of that, that thought? It's truly something God wants us to comprehend and, and to fully understand what it is. A doctor had went uh, back when home, uh, home calls were made. Those aren't made very often anymore. But anyway, he went into the uh, parlor and a, a man said, uh, uh, we're going to go back and into my uh, room, my bedroom there, you can examine me. And he said, you left your dog outside. And uh, he said, I know. And he got to talking to him about what heaven meant to him. And he said, I just don't understand. How do we know what's beyond the veil? What's on the other side? And the doctor said, well, let me explain it to you this way. My little dog is outside. He followed me into the house. I left him behind. Now I came into this room. He doesn't know what's in here. I didn't let him in. He's never been into this house, and he'll certainly never enter this room. But he wants to come here because he knows I am here. And that's why he understands that he loves me and wants to be where I am. Do we understand today that God's love takes us beyond where we are, where we stand, where the adversities of a life, the difficulties of life that we face are really going to be overcome. They're going to be finally vanquished 
And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. I think this speaks of the vast ocean of God's goodness, of His grace, of His love that He bestows. And I want you to look real quickly at those words, the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, because the breadth means that God's love reaches across the world. Literally, when Jesus had His hands nailed to the cross, it was an outward expression that He was reaching for the world to save who would listen to Him and believe in Him from their sin. I want you to consider the length because it reaches to the greatest sinner. I've thought about people who say, I can't be saved. There's no way God would save me from my sin. And the truth is He would if you but accept Him as Savior. He died that all might believe in Him. I consider the depth that His love reaches down into our depraved soul to save us. Every last one of us today who either are listening online or, or sitting here listening in the, in the uh, sanctuary, you understand that there are things in your life you would not want anyone else to know. Yet God knows who you are. He knows your inner man. And He still came and died to save you from your sin. I, I consider the height. It comes from heaven above. Have you thought about that? We, we all wonder, where is heaven? Can we see it? Or has God hidden it from us as a veiled uh, uh, location? I, I can't answer that. But I can tell you that from heaven above, God looked into this world to save you and me in our sin. I want you to see one final thought, and I will close. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3, and in verse number 18, actually two thoughts, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to, I can't do good math sometimes. Uh, in, uh, in, in uh, no, I'm on four. We're okay. Okay, to know the love of Christ, verse 19, it says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's the immensity of His great love. In Romans 5, 8, a verse that I would encourage you to, to lock away, store in your heart. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, when you look at the cross, we don't see man's goodness. We don't see the things that you have done that you thought would be approved by God. Rather, He sees past that veneer. He sees, he sees your soul. His love is not only far-reaching, it is all-encompassing. And that's the special privilege for you and me today to know that our heart, to know that in our heart that God loves you and me. I don't think there's anything that should move us as much as the knowledge that God truly loves you and me. You see, it passes knowledge. That's what Scripture says. We feel it in our hearts. We know He loves us. And it moves us. I think about what love does for us. There was a governor in the country of Suriname. And he once asked one of his workers why they always wanted to go to church. Why do you people always want to go to church? In order to sing and pray, he said, you can just do that here in my house. And they were standing by a, a coal fire, a fire of coals. And a woman answered and said, sir, you separate those coals in this fire um, and they'll soon die out. But you put them together and they burn together brightly. I think going to church is not simply an act of, uh, of, of just showing off. It's that expression of our love for God. When you go to church, you're preaching a sermon to those who, are, who live around you. You're telling the non-church goers that we're not just beasts of burden, but that we're part of God's family, a human being, that we're rational, that we're spiritual. And merely going to church can save no man, but not going to church damns many people. I hope we know that God wants us to go to church. You see, it's embedded in our soul 
when we talk about the salvation of God and the love of God, we ought to sing about it. That's what we did today. I think it's emblazoned on our face so everyone can see the joy. And it's written in our heart because we understand who He is and what He has done for us. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Michael Faraday was a scientist. In 1867, he was a chemist, he was an electrician, he was a philosopher, a very distinguished science. Someone called on him and put this to question to him. Have you conceived to yourself what will be your occupation in the next world since you believe in heaven? Hesitating a while, Faraday answered, nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And then he added in his own words, I shall be with Christ, and that is enough. This last slide I'll have Brother Jeff put up for you. Just something to think about here. Eternal life is free. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. It's not an offering. It's not an action you make. It's not a duty you fulfill. Eternal life comes from God above when He, when he saves you, when you trust in Him as Lord and Savior. Instead, listen to this. It is a gift received by grace alone, through faith alone, by Christ alone. And because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection alone, it's to the glory of God alone. I hope today we understand that's how much He loves us, that He came into this world and died for you and me. Might we cast aside everything that gets in the way that hinders what we could be and should be for the Lord Jesus Christ to simply know that His love is sufficient to carry us through and carry us safely home to heaven. We're going to sing Jesus, Savior, Pilot Me. And uh, as we uh, sing this page 402, if God speaks to your heart today and you're not sure of your salvation, I encourage you to bow your head and just simply say, Jesus, save me from my sin. And let me know as you leave here or, or give me a call if you're at home today. That's the most important thing you can do. If you've already done that, then I hope you'll sing this song very sincerely. Jesus, Savior, pilot me, guide me, lead me. Might I follow on. And today, if anyone is desirous of coming to join the church and fellowship, we encourage you to do so just by this invitation. Uh, and uh, we just pray that God will use this time for His honor, for His glory. Ruth Ella? Please stand.
Thank you for being here today. Thank you for those who have listened on our program today. And uh, we just pray that uh, we go out encouraged in the things of the Lord. He loves you. He loves me. And out of whatever else happens in this world, I'm talking from an economic standpoint, a political standpoint, or maybe a, a personal crisis that you're feeling in your life. Remember this. Jesus loves you and cares for you and will certainly pilot you safely through this life until we're home safe with Him. Thanks for being here today. May God bless you and encourage your mind and men to meet just real quickly in the, uh, in the back. Uh, and uh, Brother David Lippert, would you dismiss us in prayer, sir?